Hi, everyone. So before I start, what I'd like to do is acknowledge basically all the people who did the actual work on this project uh, that I'm representing here in this talk. So there's we've had a lot of activity, a lot of people doing great work here at now, and uh, they are really the ones responsible for what I'm about to show you today. So the, you know, the project that I'm going to talk about really derived from the approach that uh, now takes with everything that we do, which is we start by trying to understand the unmet needs of people with hearing loss, whether that means uh, children in classrooms, uh, cochlear implant wearers, uh, people with unilateral hearing loss. We approach everything we do from an unmet needs in order to understand what solutions we should be providing for them. And that's what drove this project. So what was the unmet need that we saw uh, that kicked off our work? Well, let me change this to full screen here and let me get out of your way. Uh, so the, the main unmet need that, that drove us was our observation in the middle of last year, 2020, uh, with everyone wearing masks, that people with hearing loss were struggling more than most uh, because of this. As everyone knows, uh, people with hearing loss, including people with hearing aids, have a more difficult time understanding speech than uh, people with normal hearing. And this situation seemed to be making things worse. So you see a scattering of headlines here from a variety of news articles uh, highlighting this problem. So we didn't dive in right away to uh, solve the problem, but we wanted to understand it a little more and make sure that this was an extensive problem that we should be spending time on. So what was the situation that was driving uh, this uh, unmet need? Well, first of all, um, face masks were being mandated in many situations, uh, public transportation, social gatherings, uh, medical uh, uh, environments. Uh, we were finding, even in Australia, where COVID was not as prevalent as elsewhere, that mask wearing was being required in a lot of situations where communication was important. Secondly, a lot of these situations were actually critical to understand the details and the nuances of what was being said, particularly in healthcare settings where you don't want to get a recommendation from the clinician wrong. You want to be uh, really careful to make sure that the, the patient understands everything that's being said. And again, people with hearing loss already are struggling in these situations. Now when the healthcare provider is wearing masks, it became even more of a concern. Um, even when masks weren't being mandated, uh, governments were encouraging people to still wear masks when they could. And so even everyday communication with friends and social situations became challenging. And then you also had situations where because of those communication difficulties, people were choosing not to wear masks. So in order to be heard more clearly, they were removing the mask, which was putting people uh, at risk in an unsafe situation now. Uh, increasing the likelihood of the spread of the COVID uh, virus. So these were the sort of our initial observations of the need. Oh, and then finally, even for people wearing masks, uh, if um, we, there was the uh, introduction of some masks with transparent mouths so you can see the lip movement, but they weren't widely used and acoustically they weren't very good. So what is the impact of wearing masks on speech? Well, I mean, we, we intuited uh, without any evidence, that we were pretty sure that the masks were going to attenuate parts of speech, particularly the high frequencies. Um, we also uh, determined that this would impact speech understanding in noisy environments. So even though the mask, the mask is reducing the speech to noise ratio uh, by the talker, so that alone will make it worse. But even in noisy environments with reverberation, it's the high frequencies where you have a better speech to noise ratio and these are the frequencies that were getting hurt the worst. We also uh, recognize that lip reading is an important part of how people understand others in noisy environments, particularly people with hearing loss. Wearing the mask loses those cues and we knew that was going to have an impact on people's understanding. And then we, we determined that um, speech production was actually not that impacted by wearing masks based on a literature review, but uh, we weren't too concerned that the production of speech was being impacted by masks that were being worn. Uh, so it was really about the acoustic effects 
and not on the impact on how people were able to articulate the speech that they were saying. So who are the people experiencing this problem? Well, first of all, everyone was having problems uh, understanding people wearing masks. But again, this is particularly problematic for people with hearing loss and people wearing up both unaided and aided because they already struggle to understand speech and they already have difficulty in the high frequencies where the masks were having the biggest problem. And the possibility that the masks were reducing audibility uh, speech cues to below their levels of audibility was a concern even wearing hearing aids. Um, we also uh, saw from talking to people that because of social distancing, often someone with a hearing loss will bring a partner uh, with them, especially in a critical uh, communication situation, such as at a hospital, a uh, healthcare environment. And because of social distancing, often the partner wasn't even allowed into uh, that facility. So this made it even more difficult for people uh, who had hearing difficulties to begin with, that someone who they rely on quite a bit to make sure that things are heard, heard and understand were not there for them. And you can see some of the quotes that we have here. Uh, so, and I'll just read a couple here for you. Now I only go grocery shopping with someone with me. I knew I was going to be, hearing was going to be hard, but this is a whole new level. So at least when grocery shopping, you can bring a partner. Um, and, you know, with face masks, I had issues over the phone. Uh, over the counter, I needed to talk louder, and the one at the bottom attending a clinic appointment this week in which I struggled to understand what was being said to me. So all of these were our challenges that people were experiencing uh, day by day. So what was the evidence that we, we had that this was really a problem besides our intuition and, and sort of empirical, uh, some, some circumstantial evidence? Well, if we look at the publications, you know, there was a there was a uh, several publications that had been released that um, identified hard numbers around these problems. So here's one from the American Journal of Otolaryngology, showing that over 60% of people experience moderate to severe difficulty uh, understanding uh, speech by those in emergency rooms when they had mild uh, to profound hearing loss. Um, again, transparent masks uh, weren't very good. Um, this is a, a publication about uh, the National Health Service in England where a significant number of them experienced communication difficulties wearing the surgical mask and reported dif difficulties even wearing a shield, which I think many people thought uh, would be better than a mask. Uh, turned out not to be the case. Uh, our own measures of the speech articulation, uh, speech intelligibility index or the articulation index indicated that mask wearing was going to be a problem. Uh, we know that lip reading uh, can help people by, by effectively improving the speech to noise ratio by 4 to 6 dB. And therefore, removing them is almost like uh, hurting uh, or reducing the speech to noise ratio by that same amount. Uh, in, here in Australia, the Department of Health uh, just as a matter of policy, will allow hearing aids to be fit on people who have normal audiograms if they have, if they have visual impairment because of the acknowledgement that lip reading is so important to understand speech. So if you have very mild hearing loss along with vision loss, it's acknowledged that you are going to struggle more and indication that loss of lip reading really is an impairment in communication. And then finally, uh, we noticed that uh, badges being sold in England that say, hello, I'm deaf, uh, masks make it hard for me to communicate, they were sold out. So there were people <clears throat> with hearing loss who were struggling, who were wearing badges, buying badges and wearing them to inform other people of their own difficulty. So we, we, we saw a lot of evidence out there that this was an unmet need that really uh, demanded our attention. We also looked at Reddit, where we found a, um, a thread where someone asked people with uh, hearing impairment uh, how corona mask policies affected their daily lives. So you see a word cloud here uh, of uh, what we saw, but here's some, here's some direct quotes of um, uh, what we saw on the Reddit thread. So I'll, I won't read them all out to you, but as you sort of look around and scan these quotes here, um, it's very clear that it was affecting people's lives in many ways, in their stress, in their emotion, anxiety, uh, being afraid to go out because um, of the difficulty that they were having 
And so once again, the experience of hearing difficulty is not just reduced to acoustics and audibility of speech cues, but impacts their whole lives, their whole psychosocial uh, situation. And again, this really emphasized to us the need to, to address this. So, uh, I, oh, and we reached out to some of those uh, Reddit uh, people to ask them some very specific questions about the challenges that they were having. We got 107 respondents, 41% of which were hearing aid and CI wares. So when we asked them uh, up here, you know, what top middle, um, when you were talking to someone who was wearing a mask, do you have trouble understanding? 79% reported difficulty, 86% uh, if they uh, were hearing aid wearers. When you're talking with someone who isn't wearing a mask, you have trouble understanding. Well, a much smaller number, right? So this demonstrates that the mask really is uh, the cause of the difficulty that people are having. Uh, the main concern that most people had was lip reading, but uh, many people had concerns about the muffled sound they were experiencing as well. Uh, people were frustrated, and 62% of respondents reported avoiding interacting with people with masks. So again, this is a, a situation that really shouldn't be tolerated. Uh, and what strategies were people using? Um, you know, people were asking uh, people wearing masks to talk louder, asking them to repeat themselves, asking them to write things down. Uh, people were coming up with their own solutions, as people do when they're faced with unmet needs uh, that aren't being solved for them. So that's sort of the, the, the full sort of list of evidence that we accumulated before we decided to develop our solution. So what we thought we would do is do some acoustic measurements to understand what the impact of masks on speech understanding is, uh, develop a recommendation uh, for audiologists on how they can help their clients who are hearing aid wearers hear better uh, when wearing masks. So create a, a mask preset or a mask program in their hearing aids that will compensate for the acoustic effects of masks and hopefully make their experience better, overcome those uh, anxieties, uh, social isolation that was resulting from uh, this situation, and then validate our recommendations and make sure they're having the effect, positive effect that we thought they would. So first we started by measuring the acoustic effect of masks. You can see our setup here. We had a HATS system, which is a telecommunication mannequin used very extensively in the mobile phone and, and you know, um, earpiece, uh, headphone world, and so on. And then we had Keymar. Our friend and mannequin is sitting in the middle of that room, and then we measure the impact of various types of masks with various kind of situations, both with hearing aids and without hearing aids. And so, just I want to show you at a high level what we saw because this is, I think, gonna this difference between masks and face shields uh, has a lot of impact in what I'm going to talk about next. So here you see the amount of attenuation provided by wearing a mask or a face shield. The mask is that flatter line in blue. The face shield is this peaked one here in orange. And what you're seeing here plot is, plotted is the change in sound level, dBSPL, between our mannequin not wearing a mask and mannequin wearing a mask as measured in the ear of Keymar. So I think everyone is familiar with these uh, cur types of curves as well, but what, what struck us immediately was how face shields actually boosted speech in these mid-frequencies uh, by up to 6 dB, and then how much more significantly they attended, attenuated speech in the higher frequencies. So that's really important to keep in mind. Some of the frequencies were actually boosted, but the ones that were attenuated were significantly more attenuated than with masks. So we measured a variety of different masks that, were in, that people were using out in the real world um, that we could get our hands on. So here you see four masks, four different curves. You know, the surgical mask had the least impact shown here. Uh, some of these other masks had more significant, uh, significant impact. And you can see the average there in green. Uh, but they all sort of show the same thing, just a, a, a couple dB or so below 1,000 hertz and above 1,000 hertz, it, uh, the attenuation increases uh, to a maximum of around four kilohertz, uh, anywhere between you know, four and nine decibels of attenuation at the peak. So what did we do? Well, it's, this, is a, a, this is a linear effect on the levels of speech received. 
So it seemed by applying some linear amplification, we could compensate for this. And so what, what did we do? We calculated the attenuation at the audiometric frequencies from several of these masks. So which one did we choose? We thought, well, we could come up with recommendations for different masks, but the hearing aid wearer is going to be exposed to different people wearing different kind of masks. So it didn't make sense to have a mask specific recommendation. And we didn't want to take the average because the average would depend on the mass that we happen to have selected in that group that we measured. So what we did is we calculated the range of attenuation at each of these audiometric frequencies. And then we selected the midpoint and said, sir, this is, you know, not the median, but the midpoint uh, of attenuation at that frequency. And we uh, used that to determine the amount of gain that would be necessary to compensate for a wide variety of different masks. And we didn't uh, develop, end up developing a recommendation for um, face shields. And this is in part because of that very large attenuation that occurred uh, at the higher frequencies. And I'll get to that a little bit uh, more near the end of the presentation. So these are the recommend, gain recommendations that we came up with from one to six dB uh, of additional gain in a mass setting at these frequencies. Uh, and you know we didn't try to limit these to make them smaller, but I was glad that they didn't turn out to be too large because this gain was not only gonna be applied to people wearing masks, but to all other sounds in the environment. So you don't want to over amplify sounds, all the other noise in the environment, which may make it uncomfortable for the hearing aid wear. But we, we uh, put hearing aids on Keymar uh, and we measured the effect of mass aided on Keymar. Then we, add, we created a program that had this gain boost in the hearing aids and we showed that um, the audibility of speech was restored back to normal uh, with these gain settings. So um, something that should be obvious, but we did the measurements anyways just to confirm that uh, our recommendations restored the sound levels to the proper uh, levels of audibility. So why didn't we make recommendations for, for face shields or the combination of face shields and masks, which some people were wearing? Well, first of all, as you can see in that figure again, it would have required a recommendation of up to 20 dB of additional gain in the hearing aid. And to me, that didn't make any sense at all. So sure, you'd be restoring speech at those frequencies to normal, but you'd now be adding 20 dB of gain to everything else in the environment. And that just seemed like a disaster waiting to happen. And we just knew that that was a, a non-starter. No one was going to accept that. Secondly, in order to restore audibility to normal, we were actually going to have to prescribe that gain be reduced in the mid frequencies. And recommending that you reduce frequencies is never a good thing for, I think, someone wearing a hearing aid. They're already struggling with audibility. And for those who had open fittings, you're not going to be able to control the frequencies in these lower frequencies anyway. So no matter what we prescribe, you're not going to be able to turn them down. So because they're going to come through in the unamplified level. So you really just couldn't control it with gain. And then finally, as you'll see, we actually didn't measure any impact of on speech understanding from face shield wearing. So we didn't see a need and sort of this unmet need. And you had the lip cues, so we didn't see an unmet need. Uh, that people had for compensation for people wearing uh, face shields. So we stuck just to masks. So in terms of validating our recommendations, uh, we uh, recruited 12 subjects. Here's their audiograms, sort of a range of hearing losses. And we, uh, what we did is we, um, they were hearing aid wearers, and we uh, had them wear hearing aids uh, with and without the boost in order to measure the change in a variety of measures. So we had them listen to the hats wearing a, uh, wearing a mask and also without a mask, measure their speech understanding and measured subjective quality measures of, um, with those subjects. So here's, here's what we found. So first of all, the amount of speech deg degradation in terms of the speech reception threshold. So we measured the speech understanding, uh, the SNR at 75% correct. Uh, this figure shows you the impact uh, of either face masks on the left, face masks and face shields in the middle, or face shields only on the right, on speech understanding compared to no face masks and no face shields. So zero means 
that the face mask or face shield had no impact on speech understanding. Here you see uh, a 2 to 3 dB worsening of the speech reception threshold for these subjects or of the SNR. Uh, and here with the face mask and face shield, you see a similar uh, impact on speech understanding, but you see quite a, a spread from subject to subject, some up to 5 dB uh, impact, which would be quite significant on ability to understand speech. Here we see on average, there is no impact on speech understanding from face shields. And statistically, if we look at these three different conditions, face mask and face mask plus face shield were statistically different from not wearing uh, a mask or a shield, but this was not, face shield was not. So another reason why we ended up ignoring face shields with our recommendations, uh, again, uh, based on because some of the face shields actually boosted audibility uh, in, in addition to, to reducing it. So it seemed to sort of be a wash in terms of its impact. So uh, the amount of benefit when we compensated for, um, when we added our recommendations uh, for face mask or for the face shields, we actually implemented a perfect comp compensation for face masks and face shields here. We saw that um, the face mask condition got significantly better in speech understanding. The face mask plus face shield did not when we added the high frequency boost and the face shield alone, uh, speech understanding actually got worse when we added that high frequency boost. And we're not sure why it got worse. It could be that we were hitting the limits of the hearing aid or some other internal uh, uh, sort of rollover effect of speech understanding at high levels. So again, another reason to stick to face masks only, our gain compensation provided benefit only in that situation. We had people, uh, we asked them about the acceptability of the loudness of sounds with our boost. We were worried that people might uh, not tolerate the loudness that they heard. So this is the uh, loudness acceptability of the target speech with the boost in, in different conditions. So first of all, in the no masking condition with no with no uh, boost, you got loudness, you know, around zero to minus one. They were happy with it. Presumably at the very bottom, is strongly disagree that um, the loudness is acceptable. Uh, the very top, uh, they strongly agree that loudness is acceptable. And here you see when you at when in the face mask condition with the boost, um, the tolerability, the acceptability of uh, loudness has improved so that they agree that it's acceptable. Face mask and face shield also it improves. Uh, with the face shield, there was no real change to acceptability of um, the loudness of target speech. Now, when we look at the loudness of environmental sounds, uh, we see that, again, with, with no mask, loudness of environmental sounds is fine. With face mask and our boost, we see that the loudness was also fine, although quite a spread in from subject to subject. Uh, face mask with uh, face shield or face shield, we see that the loudness uh, got worse, that the acceptability of the loudness of environmental sounds got worse, which is what we expected because that boost was being applied to everyday sounds and making them louder than they should be for that person. We also, in addition to the gain recommendations, uh, provided recommendations for other settings for the hearing aid. So first of all, once the gain adjustments are made, the audiologist uh, needs to you know, try to hit those targets as best they can, knowing that every fitting software is different, every hearing it is different. Some fitting software won't let you meet those targets exactly, but you wanna get as close as you can, maybe even use some real ear measurements to make sure that you're hitting uh, that, those additional gain uh, on top of the target. You also want to make sure, of course, once you add this added gain, that you haven't introduced feedback as a problem. Uh, you know, these, these, these are all sort of standard audiology practice when you are making adjustments to a hearing aid. The audiologist should also ensure that uh, when they add that gain, that environmental sounds aren't going to be too loud for uh, their client. Uh, you could do that by, you know, banging some things in your clinic um, and so on to see uh, if they can be tolerable with this added gain. You also wanna make sure that you're not hitting any of the limits of the hearing aid, say maximum power output or saturation or you know, some other limitation the hearing aid may have at higher levels of gain or higher output levels that they may hit with the, this additional gain. So again, pretty standard practice 
when fitting hearing aids. We also recommend that in this mask program that is created where these this gain deltas are added, that you maximize the noise reduction and directionality effects in order to minimize the effect of the loudness of environmental sounds around you and in order to maximize the speech to noise ratio because that is gonna be the number one issue when using this program. Finally, we also just you know, suggest that you apply all best practices and audiological expertise to ensure that your clients will be, you know, their hearing will be safe and that they'll be satisfied with that fitting for these situations. So, um, you know, that, uh, that's what we ended up with. Those are the recommendations that we issued last year. Uh, they're on the Wet Now's website. And um, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.